What's up guys, my name is Brandon and iOS 14.5 beta 2 was released to both registered developers and to public beta testers a few days back and after using it on multiple devices since then, I wanted to give you guys an update on how it's been running for me in terms of performance, battery life, bugs, bug fixes, all of that, along with some additional new features and changes in this update and man, the features just keep coming in 14.5. This is definitely one of the more loaded updates in all of iOS 14 so far. So let's not waste any time. Let's go ahead and get straight into some of those new additional features here in iOS 14.5 beta 2. And this starts with the music application. So we have even more new features and changes inside of the music application. We talked about a lot of them in beta one and in beta two, but there are even more now here in beta two. So if you're on a song and you go to the lyrics right here, you can now share lyrics and there's a new way of doing it. So if you tap and hold on a lyric right there, you will see this interface right here, which is brand new in 14.5 beta two. It shows the line selected out of how many characters. So 49 of 150 characters, you can select up to 150 characters. So if I go down here, you can see this is what it shows if you go over that. So we're just going to do those three right here. And if we tap on messages right here, you can send this clip, this little image right here with the song to somebody in messages. And it's really cool. And here's how it actually shows up inside of messages when you send it to somebody. So it's a link, but it also has metadata inside of that link. This is not an image or anything. It just shows up as a link. So if you want to highlight specific lyrics in a song that you wanted to send somebody, you could do that and it sends the whole song along with. And if you tap on it, it takes you straight to that song, which is really cool. Now, also, if you go ahead and tap and hold on those lyrics, you'll also see some other new things here as well. So we have report a concern right here. So if you tap on that, you can actually report if lyrics are incorrect, if they're missing, or you know, if there's an issue with the time sync, you can report all those things here inside of the lyrics now. And then also another new thing is when you share to Instagram, you will notice that the background colors are back. So if we go ahead and open and it takes us to Instagram, you can see that the background colors are back and it is dynamic. And you can see there's a slight change there in the whole UI when you share a song on your Instagram story. I really love the way this looks. We also have some additional changes inside of music as well. So down at the bottom, you'll see more details about the actual record label that the artist is signed to and that they released that project under. So you'll see more details there. Also, you can now search for record labels. Now, not every record label shows up right now. I'm sure they will in the future, but right now only select record labels show up. You can see here I have captured tracks. That is a record label. If I tap on that, you can see it shows the top releases, the latest releases, and about that record label. So this is a great way to find similar artists to you know other artists that you listen to that are on the same label. So this is really cool. I love this feature that you can actually search for these record labels now. So if actually, if we go to one of these albums as well, and we scroll down, you can see there's even a link under the album for record label. And you can tap on that and you can go straight to where I just searched for. So I cannot wait for this to roll out for all record labels and for them to show up and search and under each album, you can just click on it to go to that record label. I cannot wait for that feature. That is a really, really great underrated feature here in music. Another change I noticed in beta two is that when you unlock your iPhone with the Apple watch. So if you have a face ID device and you have an Apple watch, of course, one of the big new features in 14.5 is that you can unlock your phone via face ID while you're wearing a mask, as long as you have your Apple watch on and it is unlocked on your wrist. So there's actually a change to the text that shows and I'll show you guys in a photo what this looks like. I took a screenshot earlier. So you can see now that when you unlock via the unlock with Apple watch feature, you get this text right here. So it just says unlocking before it said something like unlocking via Apple watch or unlocking with Apple watch, something like that. But the text here has changed in beta two from beta one. Now, speaking of the unlock with Apple watch feature, it works so much better in beta two. It's much more accurate and it's much quicker than it was in beta one. I had some issues with it in beta one. It worked fine the first day, but after that, it kind of just stopped being as consistent and as reliable as I had hoped. And I didn't really think too much of it or I didn't really comment on it too much because it was the first beta, but beta two has definitely improved upon this feature, which I am very, 
very glad because that comes in handy a lot, especially when I'm at like a grocery store or something like that. I love that feature and it actually makes me wear my Apple Watch more, which is also good for Apple. We also have a couple new shortcut actions here in beta two. So in my original what's new video, I showed you guys the new shortcut action for taking screenshots. So if we search for screenshot, you can see that is the new action there, take screenshot. There are also two additional ones. So we have orientation, so we have the set orientation lock. That is a new action, and I can see that being very useful for some people that set that up with back tap. Like if you're watching a YouTube video or something on Netflix, you could just simply double tap the back of your device, have it set to set orientation lock, and that will you know go ahead and rotate your phone into landscape mode just with a simple tap of the back and vice versa. So I like that action there. Also, we have another one for voice and data. So you can see there, set voice and data. That is also a new action here in beta two and this allows you to set your voice and data mode so if you want it to be like 5g 5g auto or just lte you could change that via shortcut actions now we also get a new splash screen for the reminders application in beta 2 so it shows the new features that were available in beta 1 which i covered in beta 1 in my original what's new video but now we get a splash screen just basically telling you about these new features that you can sort reminders and print your lists and then lastly i wanted to report on youtube picture in picture has been removed again unfortunately yes yeah. so apple you know, or YouTube, I should say, removed picture in picture again from Safari. So like you can't even watch videos in Safari and do picture in picture anymore. So I'll show you guys an example of it not working. I mean, it's not like you don't believe me, but I still just want to show you guys what this looks like. So you can go here, we're gonna go ahead and do full screen, then back out and you can see it just cancels out like that. So unfortunately, YouTube is just for some reason not allowing us to prosper with the picture in picture feature here in iOS 14. So hopefully that comes back. Hopefully YouTube figures it out and comes to some sort of agreement with Apple or something, but that is not working anymore here in beta two. And I believe that's just for any version, not necessarily here in iOS 14.5 beta two. But anyways, let's move on to some bug fixes. And the two main bugs I talked about in my original what's new video and in beta one as well, was AirPlay and AirDrop. So I can confirm, at least for me, the AirPlay works fine now. So I was able to connect to my Samsung TV, both my Samsung TVs and other AirPlay devices as well. So I was able to stream videos from my phone to my TV, which I could not do for the life of me on beta one. I tried several different methods and reboots and everything and nothing worked, but now it's been fixed here in beta two. As for AirDrop, AirDrop also works now here in beta two properly. So it would be very spotty in beta one, but beta two, it works as expected now. I don't have any errors or any delays or just nothing populating. It now works as expected, which is great. But as far as remaining bugs, other users are reporting that the green tint and the flickering bugs are still present in 14.5 beta two. Now me personally, I've never had either one of these two features. I never had the green tint issue and I've also never had my display flickering. So I've seen a lot more people recently talk about the screen flickering issue, but me personally, I have not had that on any of my devices. So, but for some people that is still not fixed in this beta. Also, some are having issues with face ID being less accurate in beta two compared to beta one. But once again, that was just some people that was not me personally. Another thing is loud notifications. So this is something that has been affecting me and I have been seeing other people talk about it now that I bring it up in my videos, but sometimes notifications will just be abnormally loud. They'll be louder than other notifications or louder than what I have set the volume on my phone, which is really unusual and hopefully that gets fixed. And then also sometimes when I hand off music to my HomePod, my HomePod mini, sometimes the music will just randomly pause for no real reason. Then when I go to play it, nothing happens. It just grays out and basically I can't play music. I have to restart, you know, whatever playlist or whatever song I was listening to. So still some bugs to sort out with the HomePod mini handoff feature, but that is one of the main ones that has been annoying me in 14.5. Now, as far as the performance, performance is definitely smoother overall compared to beta one, especially in Apple music. I love the fact that these menus are so much faster than they were in beta one. It makes a big difference when these pop up like this instead of down from the bottom. And I didn't think it would be as big of a difference as it is. I mean, I knew it would be quicker, but it's like a significant difference and it really enhances my overall experience inside of the music application. Not to mention, I love the new swipe gestures as well. So if I go to like this album right here, being able to swipe to just simply add to my library really quickly is really nice. And same with the play next and play last, but as do that really quickly, it plays next. 
and it just makes the whole app experience feels so much smoother and so much faster and more productive than it did previously. And then also, like I said, the face ID while wearing a mask is much improved. As long as I have my Apple watch on, that whole process is much improved. It's more accurate, it's faster, and we have that new text and everything. So that also adds on to the performance and just makes it feel like a more solid overall build. Now, as far as battery life goes, battery life has been better for me on beta two than it has been on beta one but it's still not quite on iOS 14.4's level, which you know is kind of expected. We are on a beta stage, so it's not really expected, but I'm still not seeing quite as good a battery life as I would like to, but I can say that it has improved going from beta one to beta two, at least on my iPhone 12 Pro and on my 2020 iPad Pro. So now let's talk about when we can expect to see iOS 14.5 beta three. And I think that iOS 14.5 beta three could come as soon as next week, the week of the 22nd. So that is if they switch to a one week release cycle, which is very likely going into a third beta. Usually Apple doesn't wait two weeks in between beta one to beta two and beta two to beta three when we're on 8.5 release. So I can definitely see 14.5 beta three coming next week on the week of the 22nd, most likely within the first three days of that week. Now, if for some reason Apple decides to stick with that two week release cycle and we get iOS 14.5 beta three on the week of March 1st, that would mean that we would most likely get a 14.4.1 on the week of the 22nd. I think that is actually pretty likely if we don't get a beta. Of course, there is also the likelihood of getting 14.5 beta three and 14.4.1 in the same week. However, I would say that if we're gonna get a 14.4.1 at all, it would have to be next week. I don't see Apple releasing a 14.4.1 at all if we don't get it next week on the week of the 22nd. I'm not aware of any critical issues in iOS 14.4 that would prompt an iOS 14.4.1 release, but if Apple deems it necessary, it would most likely come next week on the week of the 22nd, in my opinion. But of course, you guys know to keep it locked to my Twitter and to my YouTube channel and also the Discord server if you want to know the exact dates when these things get released, when these software versions get released. And then finally, I wanted to go over the community poll. So you can see here, just a day ago, I asked, how has iOS 14.5 Beta 2 been running for you so far? And you can see here the results. We had 22,000 votes, so thank you to everybody who voted. I really do appreciate it. 15% said excellent, no annoying bugs and good battery life. 7% said good, just some minor bugs. 4% said not so good, buggy and average or bad battery life. And 74% are not on the 14.5 beta. So some pretty good numbers there. 15%, I believe that's 1% higher than it was for beta one. So slight progress there. If we go down to the comments, let's read off some of these. Apish says that sometimes when playing games, sound suddenly becomes silenced until going back home and re-entering the game. So that is a really weird bug. It looks like some other people have that as well. So really strange bug there. I've not had that at all, but it looks like some people are. Let me know down in the comment below if you're having that issue right there. Someone said, just when I see this poll, my screen flickered. I'm scared. So I was talking about that earlier. I have not had a screen flickering bug or issue at all on my phones, but it seems that some people are. You can see eight thumbs up there as well. D1 best player says that they may have fixed the lag issue, at least for me on the 12 Pro. So it seems like he had a lag issue on his 12 Pro, which should definitely not be lagging, but that appears to be fixed here in this beta. Z Porter says that he has the iPhone SE2 and battery life has improved with beta two and overall it's just amazing. And you can see here other people saying that they have the SE as well. The only bug I found was that Face ID did not recognize my face, but everything worked again after a restart. So that's kind of similar to what I was talking about earlier. Some people having issues with Face ID, but it appears that some people are also fixing it with a simple reboot. Yazid here is having issues with custom vibrations not working as expected. I don't use those personally, but if you have issues with that, let me know down in a comment below. Feels responsive on iPhone 7. Keyboard clicking sound when typing isn't consistent sometimes, and widget sometimes goes blank for a minute after unlocking the iPhone 7. So interesting comment there. I have had the issue with the keyboard clicking sound just not being, you know, on time. It kind of lags behind sometimes. Kevin here said that his stutter issue when switching apps or going home has been fixed in this beta, which is good to hear. You can see my comment there talking about the unlock with Apple Watch feature being much better and more accurate 
and beta two, and you can see other people are agreeing for the most part here in the replies. And then if you guys wanted to go ahead and read some more comments here on this community poll, you can go ahead and do so on the community tab of my channel right there. And again, thanks to everybody who left a comment and thanks to everybody who voted in this poll. It really does help me out and help the channel out understanding and Apple even sometimes helping out determine, you know, what's going good or what's going bad with these specific updates. But yeah, guys, there you have it. That is my follow-up review on iOS 14.5 beta 2. Hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And of course, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss when 14.5 beta 3 comes out and maybe even a 14.4.1 sooner than we know and if you guys want this wallpaper all of my wallpapers are always posted in the discord server that is linked down in the description below it's under the wallpapers channel but anyways guys thanks again for watching and i'll see you soon